today is Holy Thursday. On Monday, Thursday, we'll be here back at St. Mary's for the Sacred Triduum. And tomorrow, the three hours from 12 to 3. And then at 3 o'clock, the, um, the Mass of the Three Sanctified. And on Good Friday, again, on uh, Sunday, at Saturday night, 10 p.m., begins the Sacred Vigil. And we'll have a couple of baptisms of the vigil. So, uh, adult baptisms, so 10 p.m. the beginning of the vigil, uh, on 10 p.m. on Saturday, and ending drop back to midnight. And confession to you today. We'll do a little mini retreat tomorrow, a couple of conferences, and begin here. The epistle for this Holy Thursday, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians chapter 11. Brethren, when you come therefore together into one place, it is not now to eat the Lord's Supper. For everyone taketh before his own supper to eat. And one indeed is hungry and another is drunk. But there of you not houses to eat and to drink in, or despise ye the church of God and put them to shame that have not. What shall I say to you? Do I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which I also have delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night as he was betrayed, took bread and giving thanks, broke and said, Take ye and eat, this is my body, which shall be delivered for you. This do with commemoration of me. Like manner also the chalice after he had supped, saying, This chalice is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as you shall drink for the commemoration of me. For as often as you shall, you shall eat this bread and drink this chalice, you shall show forth the death of the Lord until he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread or drink the chalice of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man prove himself, and so let him eat, it, and eat of that bread and drink of the chalice. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh of judgment unto himself, not discerning the body of the Lord. Therefore are there many infirm and weak among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. And whilst we are judged, we are chastised by the Lord, that we do not that we be not condemned with this world. And then the gospel. Take that according to St. John, chapter 13. Before the festival day of the past, Jesus, knowing that his hour was come, that he should pass out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And when the supper was done, the devil having now put it into the heart of Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, to betray him, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he came from God and goeth to God. He rises from the supper and layeth that side of the garment, and having taken the towel, girded himself. After that he put his water into a basin, and began to wash the feet of the disciples, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. He cometh therefore to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou shalt have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He that is not wa he that is washed needeth not but wash to wash his feet, but is clean and holy. And you are clean, but not all. For he knew well, who he was, and that would betray him. Therefore he said, You are now all clean. Then after he had washed their feet, and taken his garments, being set down again, he said to them, Know you that I have done what I have done to you, and call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. But then I, being your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that as I have done to you, so you do also. That's what the words of today's holy gospel. And the Father, the Holy Ghost, Amen. We begin the consideration of this 
Holy Week, this sacred trip. One of the great mysteries of the history of the world. It is interesting that in 1956, Pius XII, when he changed the Holy Week, he made, they changed the Passion, the reading of the Passion. When we read the Passion now, it begins with the Garden of Gethsemane. So when did Jesus Christ begin his journey to the cross? He went to the Garden of Gethsemane, a strong throw away from three apostles. He said, Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but thine be done. He then shed his blood for three hours. And so begins the passion. However, if you read any missal before 1955, this is not the beginning of the passion. The passion begins when one man, who was one of the twelve apostles, volunteered himself as a member of the army of Satan. There are two human beings responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And that is where the crucifixion begins. The high priest, Caiaphas, a true priest of God, true son of Aaron, who was anointed by God through the hand of Moses, and he is a priest. Not only was he a priest, he is the head priest of the whole world, the chief priest. And he said, one man must die for the people, and we will not rest until this man dies, and that man is Jesus Christ. And some of the priests, hearing the words of Caiaphas, said, we will fast. And this was the fasting of the first land. We will not take bread until that man is dead. This was the beginning of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And then there was a second priest, Judas the priest. Now Caiaphas, the priest of the Old Testament, he wanted Jesus dead. Now we have, but he doesn't know how he's going to do it because the people love him so much. However, the solution is given to him when the priest Judas comes and offers himself to Caiaphas. This is where the crucifixion really begins. It begins with a priest. <coughs> and it makes great sense that in 1917, the Blessed Virgin Mary gave a prophecy about the 20th century and a prophecy about Russia spreading its errors throughout the world and communism taking over the world and making the whole world filled with evil and the whole world going after Satan. And who is the one to stop it? The priest of God. But what will happen in the 20th century? The priest shall become corrupt. The priest shall offer himself to Satan like Judas did. And the priest who is the high priest shall imitate Caiaphas and shall devote his priesthood to the killing of that man. This is the history of the 20th century. The history of two priests. Caiaphas, whom we call the modern popes, and Judas, of which there are so many, countless Judases, in the last 200 years. It is a story of a priest and a priest. And because of these two priests, Jesus Christ is crucified. They already hated him. They already wanted him dead. But until the two priests came together, until the two priests worked on the same side, until they coordinated their efforts, Jesus Christ was not to be crucified. And hence, for the last 1,000, almost 2,000 years, we 
We always begin the reading of the Passion with, and Judas went and showed himself to the priests. Judas the priest showed himself to the high priests. And what did he say? What will you give me if I betray him? That's how it begins. <clears throat> Here we have a great mystery. If it wasn't for the priest whom God made a priest, Caiaphas, and if it wasn't for the priest whom God made a priest, Judas, there would not be the tragedy of Good Friday. So surely, any wise man, what will he do? Realize that making a man a priest was just a big mistake. Making a man a priest was not wise. Man cannot handle priesthood. He is too proud. He is too weak. He is too inclined to money. He is too inclined to sin. And if you give him priesthood, he will take that holy priesthood and he will turn it to his own selfish ends. He will turn it to money. He will turn it to nepotism. He will turn it to each of the seven capital sins and most horribly to the grave, horrible sin of pride. That's what the priest is going to do. And then he's going to use his power to bring about crucifixion when he is supposed to be the one who brings Jesus Christ to souls and brings souls to Christ. It's a terrible mistake. Why did the Lord do it? Why did he not correct his mistake? Whenever someone puts money out on the table, someone comes and steals it. Then he puts money on the table again. Someone comes and steals it. You know what? I made a mistake. I won't put money on that table exposed to others anymore. I'm going to correct my mistake. But our Lord Jesus Christ decided that there would be priesthood. And priesthood is necessary to human life. He decided that there would be no humanity without priesthood. And so he made Adam a priest, the very first man. Cain was a priest. Abel was a priest. And we find the very first murder happened because of the jealousy of a priest. And we find the very first sin was committed because of the pride of a priest. Priests are the cause of the problems in the world. And when we look at the world today, we can all point the finger to the Bilderbergers, to the CFR, to the One Worlders, to the communist Masonic infiltrators that were holding on to the church. We can point to all the wickedness of man. But let us bypass all the baloney and go straight to the essentials. Why is the Church Catholic Church in a state of crucifixion today? Why is blood going out from the mystical body that is souls going out and falling on the ground and being separated from that body and dying and for going to hell? Why is there a great wound in our church? It is because of Judas priest and Caiaphas priest. And most importantly, it is because of Judas, priest. Why is there trouble in the world? It always goes back to a priest. Always. We try to point the trouble somewhere else, but it isn't. What did our Lord say? The priests are supposed to weep when they go from the bottom of the steps Climb into the altar of the Lord. Let them weep for the sins of the people. And God will hear the weeping of the priest. But they cannot weep. And God does not hear. And therefore the people are not forgiven. The priest was supposed to take a scapegoat. He would take this goat. And he would take all the sins of the people. And cast them upon the goat. And then drive the goat out of the wilderness that he might die, taking the sins of the people with him. But the priest no longer takes the sins of the people. He no longer throws them upon the goat. He rather keeps sins up upon his own life. 
It makes sense. But on the way to Vatican II, it took away the first parts of the Passion. Because the Blessed Virgin Mary said, there shall be corruption in the church hierarchy. There's only one kind of individual in the church hierarchy, and that is priest. There are the priests, there are the bishops. There is the Bishop of Rome. This is the hierarchy of the church. Go down the lowest part of the hierarchy, and you've got deacons. And what are the deacons? They are priests. They are part of the priesthood. The whole problem of the church is because the, the captains, the lords of God's army, have turned themselves over to Satan. And they have decided to offer themselves to Satan. And they have traveled to him and said, What will you give me if I betray him? This is the reality of the 20th century and of the 19th century. In 1903, there were many wicked priests called cardinals. And they were in our holy church in Rome. And they elected a mason, a follower of Satan, a most wicked man in Cardinal Rampola, to the papacy. Later on, these wicked priests would elect another mason to the papacy, Roncalli, Roncalli who became John XXIII. They would later elect Montini to the papacy, who was one who was responsible for the death of multiple Catholics. They would become Paul VI. They would choose wicked men to be the heads of the key dioceses and the dicasteries of the church. And they would do this because they sold themselves to Satan. And the crucifixion of the church is because of priests. Now we must understand that priests, by the will of God, are essential to human life. We say there are seven sacraments. And St. Thomas Aquinas tells us there are seven sacraments, and every one of us, including the little girls and the women who can never become priests, every one of us, little girls and ladies, they are all intimately connected to priesthood. The seven parts of life are necessary for every one of our lives. Firstly, I must be born. This birth is for every one of us, and through this is related to the sacrament of baptism. All of us must have ways of combating the wounds of life that are constantly attacking us and destroying our bodies. We have to be able to heal our bodies, and through this is related to the sacrament of penance. Everyone must grow to perfection in adulthood, where they will fight as soldiers and adults. And this is the sacrament of confirmation. And there must be a continuation of the human race, that this race that God said put on this earth must be able to continue, and therefore I must be involved in the act of procreation, in having children. Each one of us is involved in family in some way, by the marriage. And there must be a and there must be also a preparation for entering into heaven. To finish our journey, and to pass through the gates of heaven, and to this is extreme unction. But every one of the six sacraments, and there must be food that sustains us at all stages, before birth, at birth, in healing, at confirmation, and at every stage of life, the food must sustain us, and this is the Holy Eucharist. But all six of these things are always related to order. Someone must baptize me, someone must make me an adult and confirm me, Someone must guide me through the doors and to heaven at the sacrament of unction. Someone must make sure that I am united in a holy matrimony. Someone must feed me the body and the blood and the soul and the divinity of our Lord. And this is holy orders, the priest. Every one of our lives, in every aspect of our lives, are intimately tied up into priesthood. So when there is a wicked priest, when there is a priest that turns against God, when there is a priest that betrays God, it is not ever only a personal betrayal. The betrayal is for the whole church. The betrayal affects the whole world. 
The betrayal is exactly as the betrayal of Judas. And what does it say in order to make it clear? And Jesus Christ was crucified, and our Lord Jesus Christ went to be crucified. What does it say? Traderator. He was betrayed. He was handed over. He did not simply walk before Pilate. He was betrayed to Pilate. He did not walk before Caiaphas freely. He was betrayed to Caiaphas. And who is the traitor? Priest. Hence we say that we should always pray for priests. The priesthood is essential to our lives. And God decided there should be priests. And the mystery of the crucifixion, it began to the priest. Judas decided to offer himself up to Caiaphas. And Caiaphas had already offered himself up to Satan. And Caiaphas was not a builder burger. And Judas was not a builder burger. Caiaphas and Judas did not belong to the secret societies to try to destroy God. They were just corrupt priests. They were captains in the army of God. The chief captain, Caiaphas of the Old Testament, and one of the twelve chiefs of the New Testament, Judas. One of the twelve principal priests of our holy church who was with God every day, who had the power to perform miracles, who had the power to baptize, who had the power to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, who had the power to ordain priests. He had all the powers of every bishop. And what did he do? He considered his life the life of a thief. He was supposed to have the life of a priest, but rather he was the life of a thief. He considered all of the, all the gifts that God gave him, he turned into thievery, he turned into another purpose than the one that God intended all the gifts to be given him for. And hence his final scandal was related to money. It was when Judas said, I can't take it anymore. I have taken all of his times that he could have ruled. He went and hit himself on the mountain. He scandalized people saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood. He keeps getting in trouble with his own friends in Nazareth. He has one problem after another after another. And I tolerate it, and I tolerate it, and I tolerate it. Now that this girl comes in, and on the Wednesday of Holy Week, or Monday of Holy Week, she takes 300 denarii worth, one year's wages of the most expensive ointment, 50,000, 40,000 bottle, dollar bottle of ointment, and she came and broke it on the feet of our Lord. And he was scandalized. And St. Luke tells us, Judas was not the only one who was scandalized. All the other eleven were also scandalized. Not only Judas. But Judas said, to what purpose is this waste? And the others also said, you're right, Judas, this is ridiculous. $40,000 worth of ointment? What's he doing with that anyway? And then she breaks it on the floor? This is insanity. It was a straw that broke the camel's back. I can't take it anymore. I am disgusted by the corruption and bad decision making of this man. I am going to betray him. Why do we say these words? He's a liar. And the Holy Ghost tells us why Judas said these words. He did not say these words because he was scandalized. The other eleven were scandalized. They couldn't believe it. They couldn't understand Judas was not scandalized. Judas said these words because he was a thief. His heart already belonged to Satan, and then Satan entered into a special way, and Satan filled Judas. If you look at the Gospel, everyone except for a priest gets filled with Satan once. If you look at Judas, he received Satan three times. In an unholy trinity. First, he received by Satan when he decided to become a thief. And he was in the state of mortal sin, he was a thief. And this he was similar to all other thieves. But then he became scandalized because Christ allowed Mary Magdalene, Saint Mary Magdalene, to waste money. And then it says in the Gospel of Luke, Saint Luke, and Satan entered him who was already filled with Satan. And then Satan led him, and he went to the high priest, the second level of Satan inside of Judas. And then when we get to the Last Supper, 
St. John will tell us, and Satan entered him. Three entrances of Satan. He's already filled with Satan. And so the priest, when he falls, he's not finished. He can go so much more deeply. He can become so much more filled with Satan. And Satan recognized how important this is. And hence, when he decided to have a Jew found the Illuminati 300 years ago, named Adam Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt realized he cannot be a true leader in Satan's kingdom unless he's a real priest. And therefore, Adam Weishaupt faked his conversion to the Catholic faith. And he joined the Jesuits, the most holy of all the orders at that time. He didn't just join any order or a diocese. I'm going straight to the top, which has the greatest saints of that period. He went straight to the Jesuits, and he became a Jesuit priest. He went through all their extra long training, longer than anyone else's training. He then became a priest, and he acted so holy through the entirety of his exemplary training. And then once he was the name priest, he left the church again and founded the Illuminati. He wanted to make sure that Satan was in him in the most deep way that he might guide the destruction of the church. It takes a priest to be able to really destroy the church. It takes one that really knows Christ, who knows his ways, who lives with him, who holds him in his hands at the holy altar, who preaches the word of God, who is inside the holy church. This is the one who can be the most wicked. And this is what's happened. If there were not Judas priests in the Catholic Church in the last 200 years, there would never have been Vatican II. And if there were not Judas priests in the Catholic Church in the last 200 years, the Communists, the Masons, all the different Satanists, the enemies of God, no matter how much money and how much influence they had, could never succeed. The St. Basil the Great said, 80 year old, feeble, barely unable to walk, against the evil emperor, forget which one it was, Aryan emperor, one of the Constantines. He stood up against him and he said, You're pretty strong for a feeble old man. I thought I could easily push you over. But St. Basil said, you now see the power of the priesthood of God. You cannot withstand it. But what has happened? His holy priesthood has been infiltrated by Judas priests. And these Judas priests have freely given themselves over. And they have handed the church over to the devil. And remember these Judas priests, they do not have to be Satanists. Judas wasn't a Satanist. Caiaphas wasn't a Satanist. They don't have to be infiltrators like AA 1025. The man that was paid by the communists to become a Catholic priest and infiltrate the church. All we have to be is priests that are scandalized. Scandalized at the things they see in our holy church. Scandalized at the un un the, the not understandable behavior of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who are going to go to the enemies and say, what are you going to give me if I betray him? Nothing really bad will happen. I'm just going to get 30 pieces of silver, and then I'll get my little 30 pieces of silver, and I'll go off, and I will have, there will be no great problem. This is what Judas thought. What happened? Christ died. Judas despaired, hung himself. And so this has happened to many priests. What is necessary for us in our time? Pray for the priests. God has determined that there should be priests. And priests who hand themselves over to the devil affect the whole church. But so it is on the flip side. Let's go back to the first murder of the first priest. Caiaphas, I mean, Cain murdered Abel. But then what happened? God came down, and what did he say to Cain? The blood of thy brother Abel, it, it cried to heaven. God came down from heaven because of the blood of the priest. God came down from heaven because of the innocence and prayer of Abel. 
when God punished Cain, and God continued the promise through, through Seth, and God did not allow himself to be stopped, and blessings came to the world because of the priest who was a shepherd. And he determined from that day forward, all priests must be like unto Abel, and they must be shepherds. And while there will be many wood, wicked shepherds, the number will be known only by God. So many wicked shepherds. It only takes one good shepherd. The good shepherd. And the good shepherd came. And the good shepherd wiped out all of the wickedness of Satan. And he wants the priest to understand that though there are many wicked priests, and all of us are guilty of some sin, there must be good shepherds. And a good shepherd cannot fight. A good shepherd cannot be a good shepherd. He cannot persevere without the prayers of the faithful of the church. Because all of us are affected by the priests. So let's pray for the holiness of the priesthood. And pray that God send laborers of the harvest. Who will be worthy laborers. This is what's needed in our time. Weak young men, weak sinners. Who will come to the seminary. Who will be ordained priests. But who will be imitators of the Good Shepherd, imitators of Abel, imitators of St. John, of the weak St. Peter, and they shall go and become priests of God who will fight against the Judas priests. Because in the end, it's a war between the priests and the priests. On Good Friday, the priest Caiaphas fought in the name of Satan. And the priest, the humanity of Jesus Christ, fought in the name of God. And there was a great war between priest and priest. And the high priest, the true high priest, he is the one that won. The other one was defeated. It hasn't changed in 2021. It's still a war between priests. Therefore, let us pray for the conversion of priests. They come back to God. That is why it makes sense that the Blessed Virgin Mary said, Let the priest who is the bishop of Rome convert. That's what it all depends on. And when the priest who is the bishop of Rome, called the Holy Father of the Pope, when he converts, and when he listens to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and when he consecrates the rest of the Macarhata of Mary, in union with all the other bishops, there shall be a great conversion of the whole world through the administration of Russia. It's going to happen when a priest converts. Pray for the conversion of priests. And this is most important for us in our time. And the Lord sent priests into the harvest. And that these laborers be faithful laborers of the harvest of our Lord. Then all the goes of that. And God bless you all then. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So at the end of the Mass today, we have the Blessed Sacrament procession to the altar of repose. And then adoration. We try to stay if we can until midnight for at least one hour. And then midnight we'll end the adoration. And then tomorrow at noon, three hours of uh, rosary, stations, confessions, and conferences. And then at 3 p.m. the mass is pre-sanctified, and then uh, and then uh, the uh, afterwards with the Friday, Saturday, uh, 10 p.m. the sacred vigil of uh, Easter, and then the wrap mass around midnight, and then uh, so in any case we'll close with that again. And God bless you all once again.